Hey, thanks for joining me. I, um, I've often, you know, talked about on this channel about a lot of traditional knives, folding knives, and really haven't spoken too much about some of the more, I guess you'd say, modern folding, locking blade, you know, knives. But, you know, I've carried one for a number of years, and I, I guess when I, you know, started carrying something that I could clip in a pocket to a pocket, something with a locking blade, you know, I, I kind of started off with some inexpensive, you know, affordable kind of options. You know, I had some Kershaws, um, I had a Beretta, you know, like the gun company Beretta locking lock blade knife at one point. It, it really wasn't very good. <laughs> Got rid of it. I don't know where it went. Anyway, I, um, I carried um, some CRKT knives. I had one of their M16 knives, which I really liked. Um, but in around 2004, 2005, somewhere right in there, I uh, was shooting IDPA matches with my youngest son at a local indoor range called H&H &H Indoor Range. And at each one of these IDPA matches, you'd of course pay a range fee uh, for the match. And they collected this money, and then at Christmas time, they would hold a, a drawing, and uh, you could win something. And I'd love to say I won this knife that I'm going to talk to you about because I was a great shooter, and you know what? No, and I'm not bad shooting wise, but I um, I wasn't the top shooter certainly, and uh, I. Uh, I didn't win the knife, other than I won it in a random drawing. So, and what I won actually was a gift card for the range, the store at the range. And uh, so I went out into the store at the range and, and I bought this. And this is the um, Benchmade Mini Griptilian. And um, this was probably the first, I guess what you'd call, premium grade pocket knife, you know, lock back folding knife or lock blade folding knife. Um, that I'd ever had. Up to this point, like I said, I had some pretty affordable options and I, I really just wasn't the kind of person and still probably am not that will go out and spend a lot of money on knives. But I wanted something that was really nice and I had this gift card from the range so I bought this. So this is, like I say, it's the Mini Griptilian from Benchmade. It's a great knife. It's one of my favorites. I've carried it well since around it was either 2004 or 2005. Um, I've carried it since then seen a lot of use, filled up really well, but I want to put it on the bench so you can take a look at it. If you notice, this is one of the older ones. I don't know if you are familiar with Benchmades, but the mini reptilians now have a round hole instead of this oval hole. So this is kind of an older one. Been around, like say, for a little while. And um, I have a hard time saying something that was made in 2004 or 5 is old. But, <laughs> you know, um, considering how old I'm getting, that seems pretty young. Anyway, let's put it on the bench. We'll take a look at it, and uh, we can talk about what it is, and uh, you can see uh, see this knife. Okay, here we go. The Benchmade Mini Griptilian. This is a knife that, like I say, I bought it. It was either 2004 or 2005. Um, when I saw this at the, uh, the gun range store, I just thought it was really unique. And, of course, by that point, I knew who Benchmade was. You know, they're not... In 2004, they're not a company that's been well known for a long time. Um, they've been around a little while, but they're not, you know, an old, you know, a company like you know Case or Buck or one of those kind of companies. They're they're kind of they're kind of new to the scene at that point still. Um, but this is one of the collaborations that Benchmade did with some knife makers, and Benchmade was one of the first to start doing collaborations. And if I can get this to focus on this shiny blade, this is um, a collaboration. You can see it here with a guy named a knife maker named Mel Pardue. And I think Mel, as I understand it, just passed away last year. He uh, was a well-known knife maker in Alabama, and of course, Benchmade's in Oregon. Um, but he uh, he has some really uh, amazing designs, as I understand it, was also um, known for being an instructor and teaching people how to build knives or make knives. Um, but this um, this is just a really unique design. If if you've listened to many of my videos, you've probably heard me say that I like knife blade profiles that have um, a very gentle or little upsweep. I don't like a blade that sweeps up very sharp at the tip, and uh, that that to me just is not as as not as useful a design. So I really like this this design. It's called a sheep's foot blade, and 
I have to think, I mean this name Griptilian, if you look at this oval, uh, oval hole and you think of that as the eye, this blade looks like the front of some kind of maybe prehistoric reptilian kind of, I don't know. But they call this thing the Griptilian, but I think that name must have something to do with that blade shape. I mean, it just, it's a, um, I don't know, it just reminds me, and it's kind of silly, but this shape with this oval hole reminds me of the head of some kind of reptile. I don't know, that's just me. But anyway, this is a mini griptilian. I've always kind of wondered where they got the name. Anyway, so this, uh, as you can see from the wear on the belt clip, has been used and carried a lot. Um, and by the way, the belt clip can be attached on either side, but it is, it will not attach up at the top. So this is definitely going to be, you know, going in your pocket this way. You can't, you can't put it in that way. But, um, it's always worked quite well for me. Of course, this has been made, I think they call it their axis lock, is uh, just really solid. You know, and over the years I've taken this apart a few times and cleaned it, and I know there's some little, kind of fragile little springs that um, may need at some point to be replaced on this thing. But the, um, so far it uh, doesn't show any sign of being a problem. Um, it, the knife has just performed really well. And when I first got it, um, there were a couple other choices, but I really kind of gravitated towards this blue color. And I've since bought many other knives with blue scales like this, pocket knives, because I found that if you drop one of these, especially on the forest floor, you know, out in the woods or somewhere, really easy to spot with this blue color, because this is just not a color that you see very often in nature. I mean, you compare it to this this uh, zebra wood board that this is on, and and you can see that you know it's a very natural color. You can see that it really stands out. So that that's always been really great, easy to spot if you drop it or if you lay it down somewhere, which I try not to do, but it's really easy to spot. So this knife um, uses a blade steel. Again, I don't know if I can get this to focus on this, just where I need it to here. But you can see right up here at the top it says 440C, and 440C at that time was still considered something of a premium steel. Now today, people are like, eh, 440C, you know, that's just an old cheap steel. In its day, 440C was a very good, high quality steel. It's got um, a pretty high level of carbon. It um, holds an edge well. It's one of the early, um, early stainless steels that was considered really good for for uh, knives, and you know, back then there was still a lot of debate on on whether um, 440C was um, or any of the 440 series steels were you know were as good as carbon steel. Um, you know, it's um, today we have steels that potentially um, you know can outperform it. Um, but if you look at if you look at the composition of 440C, I mean it's typically got around 1% carbon. Um, I think specs are you know like 0.95 to 1.2% carbon. It's got um, pretty high level of chromium. It's 16 to 18% chromium, which is a you know pretty high. 1% um, manganese, 1% silicon, 0.75% uh, molybdenum. There's a little bit of phosphorus and, and silicon in there or um, sulfur in there rather. And so it's um, it's not, if you actually compare the, um, the formula or the recipe for this steel, it's not that far away from VG10. Uh, I think if you were to do a side-by-side -side comparison in, in terms of performance, you would find very little difference. Um, it's relatively easy steel to sharpen. When, when this 440C first came out, a lot of people complained about stainless steels were hard to sharpen. And some of the older whetstones, you know, like Arkansas stones and stuff, maybe that's true. They don't, they don't cut into the steel as readily. But if you're using a ceramic stone or a diamond stone, something a little bit more modern, you won't have any trouble with 440C. And it, it just performs really well. Corrosion is, and you can see on this blade, I've been using this for a lot of years, and it's been in my pocket a lot and gotten wet a lot, and, and there's no signs of any rust or anything on it.
So, you know, if you run across a knife with a blade made of 440C, don't dismiss it as just some old steel that's no good, some cheap steel. Because 440C, even today, is, um, it's, a, it's a very good steel. And, and I've talked about it in a couple other videos. I did a video about some Barlow pocket knives, and I have a, a um, Barlow that's made of 440C. It's a Boker Plus, which is, of course, one of the Chinese ones. But it's um, very uh, good quality steel. 440C holds an edge. You can it gives you know it'll take an excellent edge, very sharp, and it'll hold an edge well. I you know I know there's some super steels out there now, you know the premium steels like S30VN and some of those that will exceed it in terms of you know edge holding ability or whatever. But you know if this if you have 440C that's hardened properly, which you know typically you can get it between 58 and 60 on the Rockwell C scale, if it's hardened properly. Uh, it's going to do a good job. And bench made this one. Um, obviously, the heat treat is really good on it. It holds an edge incredibly well. Sharpens really well. This razor sharp and uh, just performed has performed really admirably for me. Now, bench made added some different blade profiles. They have some more conventional blade pro profiles that use a thumb stud. They still have this sheep's foot, but now it has a big oval or round hole instead of the oval. And to me, maybe, you know, functionally, maybe you can get your thumb in there a little easier and open it. I don't have any problem at all in uh, opening this knife. And, and I'm not one of these people that flips knives open and has to snap it open, you know. I, I, I don't really find the need for that kind of speed really necessary in what I do. Um, but it, it opens readily. I can close it one-handed. And I, I don't know, I think the oval hole really looks cool. Um, a little bit of jimping on the back of the blade and on the back of the, the knife handle back here. So if you put your thumb here, like in between the blade and the handle, you've got a good, good purchase there. Um, the checkering on the scales is good. I know they make a lot of accessory. You can buy different scales with different materials and G10 and all that kind of stuff. And um, you know that's fine if, if that's what you're into and you want to do that. But I have had no issue hanging onto this. It's a very ergonomic, very comfortable um, knife to use. Um, I've just had had great luck with it. So if you don't like this sheep's foot kind of blade, there is another blade option for the mini griptilian. Um, you know, if that's if that's what you're looking for. But if you're looking for an EDC knife, you know, the Mini Griptilian has been probably one of the most popular EDC knives in Benchmade's history. And, and I know they make bigger knives and they make fancier knives and, and all that kind of stuff. But this Mini Griptilian is of a size that will readily fit in your pocket. Um, you know, it... it um, it's just a good size. It's not so big that's going to freak people out when you deploy it or you you know you pull it out of your pocket and open it. It um, you know doesn't look like some scary black tactical knife. You know I've never had anyone freak out when I've pulled this out and opened some boxes or whatever. And um, I've used this thing just a lot. I used to install emergency call systems. Um, and traveled all over the country installing them and so I would you know go all kinds of places and unbox equipment and install it and use this knife um, pretty much daily for well since 2004 I don't <clears throat> I don't use it quite as often as I used to because my work just is not the same but um, I still carry it quite often um, I have a spider codelica 4 that kind of <clears throat> excuse me um, trades off with this in terms of my everyday carry and we'll talk about that spider coat in another video, but this has just been a fantastic knife. So if you're looking for an EDC knife, um, this is just kind of hard to beat. Good quality steel, good blade design. You know, it's a good, good thickness on the blade. It's it's um, you know not a full flat grind, but it's kind of a half flat grind with a secondary bevel. Holds a great edge. Just a great design from Benchmade. Well, there you have it. The Benchmade Mini Griptilian, um, like I say, this is 440C steel, an early design of this knife. It's been a fantastic everyday carry knife. Um, I just have really enjoyed using it. If you're looking for an everyday carry option, I think you'd find this, you know, this is a great choice. And of course, Benchmade has been very successful with this design. 
and sold a, a zillion of them. So they're uh, they're pretty common. But great knife. If you have any thoughts or questions, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.